What is a mag loop? And why would I use one? Wolf River coils, whip or coil, tuners for portable ops, and ferrites on coax, this time on Mailbag Monday. Good Monday to you all. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, kmrd at icloud.com. We got four great questions for you today, so let's dive right in. This first question is involving mag loops. This viewer writes, I just got my technician license and plan to get my general license in a few weeks. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the club. You've been a massive inspiration to me, and I greatly appreciate all your videos and the knowledge you pass on. Well, thank you. Uh, one, when are you going to have the Trilam back in stock? I actually just had uh, about 18 of them in stock and they already sold out. <laughs> so sorry. Can you explain in your fantastic way, what is a mag loop antenna and why would you use it? So that's a good question. Let's start with what is a mag loop here. Uh, this is a picture of a mag loop. This happens to be the chameleon, uh, M what the heck do they call it? The cha loop three something or other so basically what a magnetic loop is, is it's a it's a highly highly compromised antenna so basically you have a a variable capacitor in that box and your coax is going to actually go up to that that smaller loop that's what actually feeds it and then the the rf goes through that loop and then couples i would guess through like capacitive couplings <clears throat> It goes into that outer loop and that's that's actually your radiating element and you use the little knob on that box to adjust the variable capacitor to make it resonant now these are very very small compact antennas not to be mistaken for lightweight they're actually not very lightweight uh, compared to other portable antennas uh, but sometimes that's your only option Oftentimes with just this setup, it's basically so that outer loop is, is LMR 400 and uh, the diameter is probably, I mean, it's probably four feet across it, if that. They're, they're pretty small, maybe three feet. So, you know, people in apartments, maybe you just can't put up an antenna, you're in a very compromised area and you have literally no other option, that's when you would want to use a magnetic loop. Now, for me personally, I would do anything in the world to not use a magnetic loop and i'm going to make a lot of people angry i do not like magnetic loops i think they're horrible antennas um i mean if it's literally your only option knock yourself out but i had a major manufacturer send me a very high-end very expensive magnetic loop antenna to review and i sent it back you'll never see the video i made a great video for it too uh, showing how to set it up and how it works and yada 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 and then I went to get on the air and I'm calling CQ and I'm calling CQ and I'm calling CQ and I'm calling CQ I'm not getting anybody so uh, it was just not a very good performer for me uh, you're gonna hear a lot of sad hams that are that are angry in the comments about how they love their magnetic loops that's great if it works for you that's great uh, typically they are QRP maybe 20 watts 25 watts something like that or less um, so you have a very compromised antenna and uh, a lower power. So I would never use one. I mean, they sent me like $700 worth of free antenna and I sent it back, if that tells you anything. So uh, hope that answers your question. Literally try anything in the world before you try a magnetic loop. Uh, that's my advice. All right, guys, calm down. I know there's some magnetic loop lovers out there. <laughs> Now let's talk about an antenna that actually does work. This viewer is writing, when working with my Wolf River coils, take it along, which is better for 17 meters? Adjusting the total length of the whip or sliding up and down the coils to get a better SWR, or does it matter? So yes, it absolutely matters. Now I'm gonna assume you have just the stock uh, take it along, which I believe is the Silver Bullet 1000, and then I think it's like a 102 inch whip. So you always wanna have as much of that radiating element or the whip uh, uh, exposed as you can. So have that thing extended all the way. With 17 meters, I mean, you, should, you shouldn't need much inductance at all. This, this collar should be pretty much all the way up. So uh, you, you, know, you definitely don't wanna shorten the whip and then add, uh, add more inductance because that's adding more of a compromise. Now, will it still work? Yes. 
but the more radiating element you have in the air, the better. Now, the other thing you could do, and what I think is absolutely genius that Wilfred Recoils did, they came out with this Sporty 40. So this doesn't even have an adjustable collar. This is just enough wire of inductance to have resonant on 40 meters when you use it with their 17 or, or 213 inch whip. Fully extended, you should be resonant. Now the great thing about these 17 foot whips, when you fully extend this, this is already resonant on 20. You don't need a coil at all, nothing, zero. So if you get yourself one of these, you can simply shorten this to make it resonant on anywhere from, from 20 to six meters, really, without any coil at all. So take your, your tripod, your counterpoise wires, all that for the Wolf of Recoils, just don't use the coil and you are in business. And then you're gonna have basically a quarter wavelength vertical for any of those frequencies that you decide to adjust. And all you do is lengthen or shorten this whip to get it resonant. So yeah, always have as much radiating element in the air as possible. But thank you, that's a good question. Next, we have a question that kind of confuses me. This viewer is writing, I've been following you on YouTube for a very long time. I modeled most of my go bag for Parks on the Air after what you have. But I was curious about the antenna tuner that you use. Me too. Uh, do you prefer that one or would you prefer a different one if you decide to change it up? So I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, I'm looking for some good ideas because I'm planning to use an end-fed antenna that I'm building. And all the sad ham <laughs> need to stop with the negativity on the air. I've had multiple times when I was on POTA that people would use humming and noisemakers to get people off the frequencies, which is ridiculous. Yeah, go watch last Monday's videos. <clears throat> people are just, they got, they got nothing better to do. What are you going to do? Ignore them, keep activating, and have fun. But a little confused by this question because I don't use tuners hardly ever uh, uh, in the past couple years I've probably used one once while portable uh, and if <clears throat> if you're planning on building a 9 to 1 end fed then yes you would need a tuner if you're using a 49 to 1 end fed you do not need a tuner unless you build your antenna really wrong but to answer your question I do have two antenna tuners that if I were to use a non-resonant antenna whilst portable, uh, there are two that I own that I can recommend, and there's there's even more out there. So the first one, assuming you're not going to be doing QRP, is this. This is the MFJ uh, 939. MFJ, I don't care what people say about them, MFJ's antenna tuners are absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Uh, I tuned, I used this when I first got this a few years ago. Um, I think the video is like, I don't know, best portable antenna setup. So that's probably what you're referencing. I was using this tuner with the Pactenna NFED, ha uh, excuse me, with the Pactenna 9 to 1. And I, I was able to tune up, I don't know if it did 160, I don't remember, but it did like everything 80 through 10. This 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 technically will do 160 through 10. Um, no problem with with a 41 foot uh radiating element on that nine to one absolutely fantastic i used this with my ft891 my yesu and you can uh use this this cable that will actually the radio will power the tuner and you can use the tuning functions inside the radio to do it and just having this cable makes it easy you don't need to use this cable but it makes it easier the other tuner that i like and I was sent this by Banggood, and I, I reviewed it, and I didn't really like it, but then I did a firmware upgrade, and I actually kind of like it. And now this resides in my 818 Go Kit ATU-10 tuner. The designer is uh, November 7 Delta Delta Charlie. This is actually a really cool little tuner. This is only for QRP, but after I did the firmware update, uh, it's actually been pretty good. And I keep this with my 818 because I had uh, uh, Adam K6ARK uh, made me... Uh, a, a 9 to 1 end fed and this just works so well with it so I just keep this in my 818 uh, go bag just for the heck of it and it's, it's got an internal battery there's an 18650 battery in there so you just hold this and it'll turn on in a second just like that and it charges with USB-C there and it's got BNC on the back and it's a fantastic little tuner so if you're going to use a 9 to 1 those are the two that I own that I can speak highly of. Check out LDG, uh, their Pro 2 series. They make 
uh, amazing tuners as well if if you need one but uh if you're gonna make an nfed i would i would think it's a nine to one but i don't know uh, we didn't state in the in the email so i have no idea but uh those would be the tuners that i would say uh that i know definitely work so hey thanks for writing in and good luck with your portable setup i hope to hear you on the air lastly we have a question about ferrites i was wanting to upgrade to messi and poloni or abr coax but was wondering your thought on adding ferrites how many, and if they are on one end, is it put near the antenna or the radio? I've done some research, but was wondering about what your thought are for coax and ferrites. So uh, I pretty much use ferrites almost all the time, ish. All right, let's say like 85% of the time in, in some form or another. Uh, if, if you get messy and poloni coax, you'll have to add some type of ferrite bead yourself, and they come these kind of little clamp beads and they come in various sizes. So like this is for like your LMR 400 or your, your Hyperflex 10 size coax. Uh, you can get them smaller for this, you know, this would be for like RG8X, just the hole is smaller. They're a mix 31, that's what you wanna look at for, for choking uh, coax, common mode. And uh, even if you're using a thinner coax, sometimes having the bigger holes is nicer because you can wrap the coax through a bunch of times you know, you might get three or four turns through this versus using three or four bits, three or four individual ferrites. So if you get a few of these, you can actually wrap your coax around it a few times and uh, get two birds stoned at once. So if you go with ABR Industries, you can call them, mention that you are a viewer, drop my call sign, K at MRD, and uh, chances are you'll get a 15% discount. I do have a 5% off link with Gigaparts through Messi and Poloni, as well as a 5% discount link with Messi and Poloni Direct. So either way you go, use my referral link and you'll save money. With ABR, uh, so I use these chokes quite a bit. And this is uh, one, two, three, four, there's five ferrite beads in here. And this just plugs into the radio and there's an SO239 that I plug the coax into. And these are just great for, I use these portable, like when I take my 7300 portable or even when I'm just sitting on my porch, I, I use one of these. But ABR will make you, so talk to them about what, what kind of coax you're looking for, what kind of antenna you're using, and they will recommend what will be the best situation or the best way to do this for you. But ABR will actually custom make you whatever kind of coax you want, whatever length, and they will put these this exact setup on your coax where it's permanent. So it won't be a little, a little pigtail like this. This will be on your coax. So that's one cool thing about ABR. Now, in terms of... Uh, where on the antenna you put it, that's gonna depend on your antenna. For example, I have uh, a 49 to one above my house. I actually have two of them, but uh, two 80 meter 49 to one NFED half wave antennas above my house. With an NFED, the coax acts as your counterpoise. So you don't wanna put a ferrite choke right at the feed point, right where the coax plugs into the transformer because that's gonna basically isolate the coax from the antenna and you won't be using your coax as a uh, counterpoise. So I have, oh, whatever length of coax I have coming from my shack to the antenna, right outside my wall, I have three of these clamp-on ferrite, they're a little bit bigger than this, and I've wrapped the, I'm using uh, Messi and Poloni uh, uh, Ultraflex 7 Sahara, uh, that's my feed line and I've wrapped it around the ferrite two or three times each, and I have three of those. So I basically have nine ferrite beads just outside, and that helps eliminate some of the RFI that I get back in the shack. I still need a few more. Uh, I do still get a little bit of noise on 40 meters. So the way to find out if, uh, you know, for, for me, it's my computer speakers. When I key up on 40 meters, I get this kind of humming noise on it. And I've put chokes on the the, uh, the wires for the, for the speakers and everything too, so. Um, it, it really depends. If you have a dipole, you're probably going to want the ferrite chokes right at the feed point because you don't want any of that common mode current coming down uh, the coax. So really depends on what you're using. You can also you can always experiment, put the chokes at the antenna. If that's not working for you, flip the coax around and put it at the uh, put it at the radio. So uh, you know it's ham radio. It's all about experimenting. But great question. Thanks for writing in and uh, enjoy your coax and your ferrites either way you go. 
So that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone, for watching. If you've got questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject. And you can support the channel by going to patreon.com slash k8mrd radio stuff. You can also follow me on Twitter at k8mrd. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again on another episode of k8mrd radio stuff. 73, guys.